Right, so here it is. The image that sums up genocide Joe Biden's failure to hold Israel to account. An image that should be the final humiliation. An image that shows the systemic failure to show leadership during the worst humanitarian crisis in living memory as the US built pier, built to get aid into Gaza, has broken up and is floating off out to sea due to bad weather. The only reason the thing was built is because Biden wouldn't hold Israel to account. Was afraid to, didn't have the guts to, wouldn't exert pressure on them to let aid through. Israel won't open the land border crossings. They've actually violated peace accords and seizing control of the Rafa border crossing particularly. They've been tipping off aid truck attack groups to aid truck movements, all made possible because Biden won't do what is necessary to get the aid in properly. He's prioritising the US relationship with Israel over the humanitarian crisis unfolding in Gaza and what needs to be done. And his presidential campaign is likely sinking faster than his joke of a peer is. Frankly, if you think he's a sure thing to win re-election, Biden has got a broken peer to sell you. Right, so the Gaza peer, all that work, weeks of aid, hold-ups, so that this thing could be built by the US, all under the auspices of delivering aid. Absolutely no chance the US were going to use it to smuggle in arms to Israel or anything like that, even though Israel built a road across Gaza pretty much leading up to it. But it's been nothing but a disaster from the get-go. And now, thanks to a bit of bad weather, a big chunk of it is broken off and washed up on the beach. For two months, this publicity stunt of a pier had been under construction by US troops, using US money as a method by which to deliver aid into Gaza, because when Biden asked Netanyahu, presumably, presumably he asked if he would kindly let the aid trucks in, he was basically told, no, God forbid he enforce international humanitarian law. Never mind this was against the provisional orders laid down by the ICJ at the beginning of the year and that the US has responsibilities in line with that. Never mind that famine was breaking out and the aid agency UNRWA at that time was still being defunded on the basis of alleged evidence for which Biden only had Israel's word for that was of course good enough for him. Never mind as the biggest aid donor financially and militarily to Israel on the planet and therefore could exert more leverage than anyone else, Biden opted to well, keep on acquiescing to Netanyahu all the way, it seems. He put the relationship with Israel above all of that, above the victims of their genocide, above calls for action from the UN Security Council and the UN General Assembly and world leaders across the globe who were condemning Israeli actions. Instead of leveraging enough pressure, as he could more than anyone else, just to get Israel to open a door effectively and let aid in, he instead decided to build a pier in Gaza and waste two months doing so, whilst aid was being held up at the borders, at the crossings, and just like his authority, frankly, his pier was cracked up. Following rough weather, two pieces of pier came apart and started floating out to sea, but this was just the start of the humiliation. One of the boats sent out to retrieve one of the pieces then got tangled up itself. Great. Then a third piece broke off that floated off in another direction and then began to sink. I'm reminded at this point that the US christened this thing the Trident Pier, so it's a bit of bitter irony that three bits of it decided to break off and float off. Oh, it's only meant to be temporary, some will say, to which I'll say, yeah, sure, but it is still supposed to do the job it was built for, and given that this thing has cost $320 million to build, you would kind of hope it would at the very least just stay in one piece. A third of a billion dollars, for heaven's sake. It only opened on the 17th of this month and it's knackered already. CNN's correspondent Natasha Bertrand put out a tweet quoting a Pentagon source explaining the official military line, shall we say, which reads, Deputy Pentagon Press Secretary confirms that due to high sea states and a North African weather system earlier today, a portion of the Trident Pier separated from the pier that is currently anchored into the coast of Gaza. As a result, the Trident Pier was damaged, and sections of the pier need rebuilding and repairing. Therefore, over the next 48 hours, the Trident Pier will be removed from its anchored position on the coast and towed back to Ashdod, where US Central Command will conduct repairs. The rebuilding and repairing of the pier will take at least over a week. Now, this weather front that came up from the south was clearly no joke. You don't perhaps think that the weather gets that bad in the Middle East, I suppose, from here in rainy Britain, but it was sufficient to end up beaching two small US military vessels with two more breaking their moorings. So what chance did this pier have then? But again, doesn't that underline the stupidity of this whole entire idea of a temporary pier, which just isn't going to be able to deal with the weather conditions? Well, as 
That tweet also stated the Biden administration clearly aren't finished with those stupid yet. This the peer. What's left of it is now set to be towed to the Israeli port of Ashdod for repairs, which will take over a week to just be towed back again and what? Fall apart again and a bit more bad weather? Clearly isn't up to the job, but then did the US ever care about that? They were told this wouldn't work. Critics, all the humanitarian aid agencies who were responsible for delivering the actual aid in Gaza called it nothing more than a publicity stunt, especially when it was being constructed some distance from where aid was needed, with little clue how to get the aid to where it had to get to, north and south of Gaza. Because if Israel won't even open the doors, open the crossings and let aid in, why do you think they would let it move about throughout Gaza as well? Just seems a little bit odd. Just look at what happened to the World Central Kitchen aid delivery trucks, or have we forgotten about all of that already? And they weren't the only aid trucks targeted trying to deliver aid within the street, uh, strip either, before or since. And to underline that matter, let's talk about how much aid has got in via this pier so far, shall we? Just last week, Reuters put out an article with the blaring headline, More than 569 tonnes of aid delivered across floating pier into Gaza, says US CENTCOM. That being U.S. Central Command. So Reuters there doing a stellar job of stenography for the U.S. administration in reporting such a headline. And sure, it sounds great, doesn't it? But compared to what was getting through the via the crossings before, how does how does it measure up? There are some two million people in Gaza, as we know. Most are stuck in Rafa, but not exclusively so. People dotted across the strip in sporadic patches. So how does this amount of aid stretch anyway? Well, two days after that Reuters article came out, the United States Agency for International Development, you said, held a press conference on the arrival and delivery of aid from the and from the transcript there. There was it does sound like it came to a start it began with a bit of a positive start, where they spoke of delivering some of this five hundred and sixty nine tons of aid. Since the first shipments of this aid arrived through the humanitarian maritime corridor on Friday, the UN has been distributing more than 506 metric tons of humanitarian supplies to people in need, including Deir al-Bala, al-Mawasi and Khan Yunis. To put it into perspective, more than two-thirds of the supplies entering through this new corridor have already been distributed or in the process of being distributed by humanitarian partners directly to people in need. Now, in terms of how far does that aid stretch, over two-thirds has been delivered or in the process of being delivered, we're told. And all two areas, you will note, that do not include Rafa, where the overwhelming majority, some 1.6 million people, residents of Gaza, are all trapped. None of this aid, via this pier, had by time of this press conference, reached them, and already most of it was gone. So in short, 569 tonnes of aid really doesn't touch the sides in terms of what is needed. The USAID response manager for Gaza, Dan Dickhouse, I really hope I said that right, who announced this news also went to great pains to reiterate that the aid coming in by land, as if we didn't know this already, was insufficient. But he also wasn't there to sell us a bridge either, or broken pier in this case, I suppose. Though it was still intact at the time of this presser, because he also said the US Maritime Corridor on its own is also insufficient to meet AIDS, aid needs. So, in that case, Biden has built this pier, and we still need the crossings opened anyway? What was the point of the pier at all, then? What a waste of money. When still the crossings need to be forced open to get sufficient aid in. Dick House made this point abundantly clear as well. So, in addition to the maritime corridor, every land crossing needs to be open and operate at maximum capacity and efficiency. That means enabling aid to cross the border and enabling humanitarian organisations with sustained fuel, safety and access to collect goods at the border and distribute them throughout Gaza. Every moment that a crossing is not open, that trucks are not moving or where aid cannot be predictably collected at crossings distributed increases the terrible human cost of this conflict. But the real kicker came later. Although having said the pier on its own is not sufficient, all crossings need to be open too. That comparison between aid getting in via the pier and aid getting in via crossing was made clear as well. In terms of how that compares to what had been getting in prior to the recent military activities in the Rafa government, the director of USAID's Levant response management team, Daniel Vickhouse, said, the amount of assistance that had been getting in was higher in April than it is now, noting that the amount that the UN agencies have been able to collect from border points was down, especially as the access points have declined in number. 
So more aid was getting in via road last month, despite all the hold-ups and blockades, than is getting in now, or was getting in now, via this pier, and now the pier is stuffed as well. Humiliation of the US and Biden's administration surely is complete on this matter by now. Now there's an argument that the existence of the pier gave Netanyahu the opportunity to act as he did on Rafa and close, the bo close that border crossing and uh, seize control of it, even though that goes against uh, peace accords that they've got with Egypt. Aid has to be allowed in, though. Therefore, as long as the pier was there, Netanyahu, theoretically at least, could argue he's doing as he'd been instructed, because aid was getting in. Sufficient aid. Well, that's a, another kettle of fish. Biden actually facilitated worsening this famine then by supplying this pier that lasted less than two weeks, and as a dead horse, he's apparently going to keep flogging as he's taken it off for repairs. Without those crossings being forced open, conditions in Gaza will continue to deteriorate. And instead of doing what needs doing to bring an end to that, Biden and his peer appear to be facilitating it instead. Meanwhile, while Biden's inability to deal with Israel to force aid into Gaza ex is exposed by a broken peer acting as a metaphor for his broken morality, the same isn't the case for India. Also helping someone out with... What's well, some docking capacity, we put it that way, except in their case, they're helping one of their BRICS allies, Iran. And Biden is throwing a wobbly about that. Get the details of that story in this video recommendation here. I'll hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.